Hello, my name is Quiva Kenny and I'm a senior dietitian here at Midlands Regional Hospital in Port Leash. Thank you for joining this series of videos that is going to explain what gestational diabetes is and how you can learn to control your gestational diabetes through diet and lifestyle factors. At this stage you should have received two booklets. Um, one A5 booklet that has a lot of information on diet and lifestyle factors that can help you to control your gestational diabetes and another A4 booklet that is a summer sheet to put all the information together. So as we move forward with this video, I'm going to be explaining the main uh, nutrients and the key dietary factors that are going to affect your gestational diabetes and how we can learn to help to control your gestational diabetes. To begin, I just want to talk you through what gestational diabetes is. So gestational diabetes is a condition where there's too much glucose or sugars in your bloodstream. So we want to control how much sugar is in your bloodstream so that you and baby are as healthy as possible throughout your pregnancy. And how we do that is controlling the types and the amounts of carbohydrates in the foods that we eat. So there are a few main key nutrients in our diet. We have the carbohydrates that I just mentioned, the proteins, which are like meat, fish, eggs, cheese, peanut butter, things like that. We have your fats, which are oils, butters, and then we have vitamins and minerals, which mainly come from a variety of um, foods, but particularly um, your fruits and vegetables. The carbohydrates are the main nutrient that are going to affect your blood sugar levels. So with carbohydrates, carbohydrates are your main source of energy, which we need to fuel you and baby. If you think of it in the same way as a car needs petrol or diesel to fuel themselves, you need carbohydrates to fuel your body so that it's working to its best. With that in mind, we just want to look at how your carbohydrates get broken down into your body and how they get used up by your body. So when you eat any type of food that contains a carbohydrate, let's say a sandwich for example, you eat that sandwich, that sandwich gets broken down in your digestive system. Once it's broken down into its smallest particle, which is glucose, that glucose can transport from your gut into your bloodstream. So now you have all this glucose sitting around in your bloodstream. What happens is alarm bells should be going off in your body and your pancreas should release a hormone called insulin. That insulin acts nearly like a key to let that glucose out of your blood and put it into your body cells. Where that system goes then a little bit wrong when you have gestational diabetes is you eat your sandwich, the bread that contains the carbohydrate. The bread gets broken down into its smallest particle which is glucose, glucose transports the exact same way into your bloodstream. Alarm bells go off the same way. What happens then is your pancreas tries to release that hormone insulin. However, because of your hormones during pregnancy, either your pancreas just isn't producing enough insulin, so if you think of that lock and key analogy, maybe there's not enough keys to open enough locks to let that glucose out of your body and put it into your cells, out of your blood and put it into the cells. Or the other thing that can happen is that your pancreas just isn't producing insulin as effectively as it should be to open up that um, blood and let the blood sugars out of your out of your blood and put it into your cells. So a similar analogy, maybe that key is a little bit rusty and it's not opening the doors far enough to let all that sugar out. So that's why when you check your blood sugar levels or your blood glucose levels, that's the amount of sugar or glucose that's in your body at that particular point in time. We do need that carbohydrate or that glucose in your cells because that's what allows us to give us energy and allows our bodies to function as it should be. So where does our carbohydrates actually come from? There are a few different sources of carbohydrates from our diet. The three main sources of carbohydrates are your starchy carbohydrates. These are foods like bread, rice, potatoes, pasta, yam, um, plantain. They're all starchy carbohydrates. These have a nice gradual release of sugars into your bloodstream. That's what you want. What you want is to have a nice slow release of sugars in your bloodstream. What slows that down even further if, is if these foods are higher in fiber. So things like brown bread or brown rice or brown pasta have a slow release of blood sugar of sugars into your bloodstream, which is what you're looking for. The next type of um, carbohydrates are what we call natural sugars. So these are foods that contain sugars naturally. This will be things like fruit that has gives fruit that natural sweetness, and also foods like milk and yogurt 
contain carbohydrate in the form of lactose. So if you've ever heard of someone that has like a lactose intolerance, that is an intolerance to the sugar that's occurring in milk or yogurt. You can still have these natural sugars in your diet, but how much and where you have them in your diet is very important. So we recommend to stick to one portion at a time. So one portion of fruit would be like one small apple, one small banana, two small kiwis or plums or mandarin oranges, or a small handful that fits in your hand of grapes or berries. It's important to only stick to one portion at a time and try to spread out these portions throughout the day. So you might decide to have a portion at mid-morning or mid-afternoon time. Similarly, with your milk or your yogurt, we would recommend keeping to one portion at a time. So one medium pot of yogurt, like maybe 100 to 125 grams of yogurt, or maybe a 200 ml glass of milk. So if you sat down and had a pint of milk, you'd be getting more than one portion of milk in that serving, and that would likely cause your blood sugars to spike up a little bit higher. It's important with regards to yogurt that you're choosing the right types of yogurts. Some yogurts can be quite high in sugar. So if you're wondering which one to go for, the best types are either natural yogurt or yogurts that have no added sugar or 0% added sugar on the labels. The last type of carbohydrates are your what we call free sugars or added sugars. These are foods that contain carbohydrates that release very, very quickly and spike up your blood sugars quite quickly. This is what we want to avoid. So these are foods that, such as biscuits, cakes, buns, chocolate, um, table sugar that you might add to tea and coffee, maple syrup, honey are all considered natural sugars or free sugars. So you want to avoid these in your diet for the rest of your pregnancy to avoid those spikes in your bloodstream. Another very, very important factor with gestational diabetes is the meal pattern for gestational diabetes. We would recommend that you stick to a meal pattern of three meals and three snacks every day. This allows your blood sugars to stabilize a lot more easily throughout the day. What we want to see is nice, equal, equally divided out meals and equally divided out snacks. So we would recommend that you don't need any longer than three to four hours between your meals without having something to eat, either a meal or a snack. Uh, similarly, overnight you obviously have a longer period without having a meal or a snack. We would recommend to try to avoid leaving any more than about 10 to 12 hours overnight for fasting. So to help this, we would recommend that you have a bedtime snack directly before you go to bed. You can see examples of snacks on page 13 or 14 of your booklet for more information on the correct types of snacks to include throughout the day. What we want to avoid is something like this graph here. So here you can see in this example, there's um, an example of someone that's maybe skipped their breakfast. So their blood sugars have dipped. Then they get hungry and they're eating a large portion at lunchtime, which causes their blood sugars to spike up quite rapidly. That's what we want to avoid. We want those nice gradual peaks throughout the day that don't go too high or too low um, all throughout the day. Another very important factor to consider with gestational diabetes is exercise. Exercise has plenty of benefits including managing weight gain, helping sleep, improving mood, but also it helps with the uptake of insulin in your body with, which helps to control your blood sugar levels. So we would recommend to try aim for 30 minutes most days as much as possible. This doesn't have to be 30 minutes all in one go. If your lifestyle allows, it can be really helpful to aim for 10 minutes eat after each meal to help control your blood sugars, or if you can break it up into two 15 minute blocks, that is really helpful too. I just wanna move on to how you're gonna record your blood sugar levels. So here we have an example of your blood sugar diary. What I would encourage everyone to do is to keep a blood sugar diary with all your blood sugars throughout the day and circle any of the readings that are out of target. On the other side, there is a little bit of room that you can write down the foods that you had to eat. It doesn't have to be in this booklet, but it can be quite handy. You can keep it in your own no notebook either. This will help you to figure out what foods are working and what foods aren't working, the types of carbohydrate and the portions of carbohydrate to help you figure out how to control your blood sugar levels. So this can be invaluable, particularly in the first few weeks of managing your gestational diabetes. We would ask you to send a picture of your blood sugar diary to myself and the diabetes midwife, normally every two weeks, but you'll get a text or an email or a letter to remind you to send in those blood sugars to us. 
So finally, just the, to bring it all back together, um, my take home messages for this video are to try to establish a regular meal and snack pattern as much as you can. Spread those meals out nice and evenly and try to keep them to this around the same times most days as much as you can. Try to include high fibre starchy carbohydrate like your brown bread as opposed to your white bread, your brown pasta as opposed to your white pasta at each of your main meals, breakfast, lunch and dinner. Bulk out your meals with lots of protein and vegetables which don't affect your blood sugar levels and will help you if you have to reduce your portions of carbohydrate. Try to avoid added sugars or free sugar foods like your table sugar, full sugar fizzy drinks, biscuits, cakes, buns, chocolate as much as you possibly can. Make sure that you're using your blood sugar diary and your food diary in line together so that you're making changes and you're adjusting in line with what your blood sugars are telling you. And upload or email your blood sugars to us every two weeks so that we can review them and then we can get back to you with any suggested changes. That's it for this video. Thank you very much for listening. And if you want to listen to the next video, you can follow the link that's below.